What pushes me to act as a humanitarian, especially for internal displaced people, it's because myself, I was one of them. When I, re I meet other IDPs, I remember myself the life I underwent when I was an, ID an internal displaced person. It was uh, difficult to get food, to get water, to get uh, medicine, so I have to starve. You saw the number of children who were in the camp. Tomorrow, what will be their life? I'm dreaming uh, a Congo without war, where uh, most of people are in their families, uh, where children go to school, where uh, families can go to the field and uh, grow food. There is such a number of IDPs the cholera is a serious problem. If the hygiene is not respected, in two, three, four days, you can have people dying. When you are told, for example, that the person who was sick yesterday is dead, you will have also this burden, this responsibility to say, saying, if I could do something, Maybe I could rescue this person. Sometimes I'm in a conflict with my family because of that. Because they say you have to rest. Because you worked in the, from the morning up to the evening, and then you brought your computer at home, and you will continue working. It's possible to spend two days without eating, but if you have water, you can survive. I think I'm still young. I, when I see my age, and uh, I think uh, it's time to work. And uh, since I'm still strong enough to support, to help others, I think I have to use my energy for that until I get old. facilitate the transport of staff of NGOs, of UN organizations to do their work, to distribute food, to do any humanitarian assistance. You call passengers? Vous avez appelé? You ready? <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready? Yes, we are ready. Ah, okay. We, we, we can reach really places with this helicopter and uh, give support to staff also to get very uh, urgent cargo when it comes to food uh, assistance. For me, the primary thing is saving lives and it, it starts, uh, for me, I started as a very young nurse uh, during a famine in Uganda, so I mean that was really life-saving. This is a very uh, different job from uh, what we could do elsewhere. I used to work in the uh, commercial airline before joining uh, UNHAS and WFP. Uh, it gives us the same time, uh, the opportunity to work at the desk and in the field, which is a combination that I uh, personally like. I think it's important that you find what distracts you from the stresses of work. It's also important that you have a way to be able to be in touch with your family. Of course, we all feel homesick. We, uh, we are away from our families, but th this is the humanitarian world and uh, we have to accept how it is. the 
feeling of satisfaction that you're contributing somehow to improve other people's lives, to help uh, the most uh, needing uh, people here and elsewhere. Since I was a kid, I always see conflicts. People being killed, houses being burned, and so many other violences. The armed groups are very tough. They are ready to kill. And facing them is a risk for me. It's not easy for a woman. There are colleagues who have been seriously frappés par certains des seigneurs de guerre. Pale yule niko nauliza ananiambia sehemu ni watu 12 na 2. Makumi? Wale ndio na bidi. Okay. Aseme na miongoni mwa wale kwa watu tuna walikufa. Eh hapa kuitu kulikufa watu watungai wako na hisia watu 12. Ça me poignarde vraiment. Ça me poignarde en quoi cet enfant est victime Pourquoi Pourquoi aller euh, tuer un enfant Nous sommes là pour sauver la situation des enfants. Eh bien, on doit se jeter à l'eau. Sometimes I feel like I'm part of those who are suffering because I've seen their suffering. I would like to see all these children going to school. It's part of what will make them strong. Les premières patientes, la première d'abord qui a été là, c'était une victime de violences sexuelles avec euh, des traumas, des balles qu'elle avait reçues. Et donc à partir de ce jour-là, c'était devenu vraiment une crise humanitaire. Aucun médecin n'a été formé pour traiter les violences sexuelles, aucun. Maintenant, nous avons des formations, mais ce n'est pas dans le cursus normal d'un médecin. Le gros défi, c'est d'abord de pouvoir soigner une femme, mais de ne pas avoir la possibilité de la rassurer que je te soigne, je te traite, tout va bien. Parce que je ne sais pas, peut-être quand demain elle va rentrer, elle aura une autre attaque. C'est très lourd à porter, c'est vraiment très lourd. Je suis une femme, je suis une mère. Tu ne sais pas abandonner pour aller faire autre chose. En fait, on devient euh, quelque part activiste, tu vois. Même en famille, déjà. Moi, j'ai des réactions vraiment bizarres. Hein. Tu te retrouves, pourquoi j'ai réagi comme ça Toutes ces petites fillettes qui sont en train d'arriver. Et j'ai une fillette. Parfois, c'est trop. Notre entourage, Paye les pots cassés en fin de compte. Paye les pots cassés. Mmh. Les grands moments de réussite, moi, que j'ai personnellement, c'est de voir par exemple une femme qui vient ici à l'hôpital, elle a 18 kilos, elle a tout perdu. 
Après six mois, elle a 55 kilos. Et elle te dit, je suis bien, docteur Néné. Ça va, je suis bien. Tu sais, ça, euh, c'est la plus grande joie que je peux avoir.